Hello everyone. We are so glad you are joining us for our Sunday night virtual service. We have these on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock PM as well. Uh, community is so very important always, and especially at this time. So we just want you to feel at home, feel part of the family. So feel free to be yourself and show us in the comments what your, uh, your response is to different parts of our service tonight which tonight we do have a surprise coming up later. I know I was surprised. So I, I hope you'll enjoy it just as much as I did. Um, please take a moment and just tap the share button underneath this video, whether you're you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, because um, we want other people to know that this service is happening. And if they don't have time now, they can watch later uh, or create a watch party even if you like. Uh, that's a great way uh, to share our services with others. And let me remind you that Pastor Chase has devotionals um, Monday through Friday at 11 o'clock a.m. And those are set as premieres. So you can even set reminders for yourself so that you don't forget to watch those if you're in Facebook. Uh, but they are also on our website and they are on YouTube as well. Uh, and there's so many different ways that we're, uh, you're able to connect with us at this time. The kids uh, and the kids department is doing all kinds of videos and live stream and Zooms uh, through the week every day and even has some, uh, I know, game nights with their family battles and the preschoolers have uh, craft and uh, snack time together daily so there's so much going on young adults uh, we have a discussion on healing divine healing going on um, about the John G Lake ministry uh, that was back in the 19 early 1900s uh, and that's happening on Wednesday nights feel free to email me at Carmen at beachag.org if you'd like the zoom access code we do that on Wednesday nights and on Thursday nights we've been having some uh, game nights and they've been real fun with the young adults games like balderdash and wheel of fortune and bingo and sometimes we have prizes so uh, we'd really love for you guys to connect and be a part. Um, we later on will have our, our prayer time. But right now, if you have a prayer need, um, you know, go ahead and type that in the chat so that our prayer team who is standing by uh, can have a chance to respond to your prayer needs. Um, we take this very seriously. Uh, we know that in on any given day, at any given time, um, a lot of our family, friends, uh, ourselves, we are facing challenges and we need that divine intervention. We need that divine appointment of people to pray for us. And so we want to be that for you. If you have a private prayer need, please, please feel free to go to our website at beachag.org and there is a place to submit your prayer need right there. There's just scroll down on that homepage and there's a request prayer button. And we will definitely share that with our staff uh, if necessary or just the pastor uh, if that's what you request. So, um, Lastly, we're about to get going into our praise and worship. We're having praise and worship from Daniel and Travis tonight. I'm so thankful. Big shout out to all of our praise team that's been helping on Sunday mornings or from home or just worshiping with us at home because they've been in quarantine. And um, But before we do, y'all... Give us a little emoji, a praise emoji, or tell us, please, where you're watching from, because it's so interesting to us uh, where our our church family, the greater kingdom family, uh, is tuning into us from, whether that be at your home, right here in the uh, on the coastal area of North Carolina, South Carolina, or maybe you're watching from some remote place. As you'll see uh, tonight, some of our welcome comes from far away tonight. Anyway, we love you all and enjoy the service.
Hello Beach Assembly family, this is Brother Russell. I just wanted to take a couple minutes to share with you uh, how blessed I am and how good God has been to me. Not only am I thankful for His salvation through His Son, Jesus Christ, but just all the things, especially lately with the coronavirus, uh, with the uncertainties of things, He has been so good to me and blessed me. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I work at a mom and pop uh, hotel in Myrtle Beach. It's a smaller property and something like this with everybody else being laid off and furloughed, um, I've been able to keep my job and keep it full time. And not only that, if we would have had to shelter in place or go into a lockdown, that would have been more severe than what we're doing now. It was already set in place for me to be able to go to the hotel, stay and continue to work and still work full time. That's not something that would happen without God's grace. Um, and it's just amazing. Uh, not only am I still working at the hotel, but I do pray for my coworkers. I pray for my owners. I pray for the hotel. And they're all allowed to stay on. Um, and they're all working as well. So again, with so many businesses shut down and with people going through so many um, difficult situations right now, that is a blessing. And I, I want to make sure I give God the glory for that. And I, and I want to share that uh, because that's just, uh, that's his favor. And, and I'm extremely thankful for it. And um, it's just been such a blessing to be able to go back and forth to work. I haven't wanted for anything. I have all the things that I need. I've never done without during any of this. Um, also, um, I've just been able to enjoy uh, the Facebook and the YouTube sermons. Um, I enjoy coming to church uh, with all you on Sunday mornings. It's a blessing that we've been able to do that. And I'm so grateful. Again, I just want to testify to God's goodness for that. And I, I just, um, not only that, but another thing that it just kind of struck me is the peace I've had through all of this. Um, that's just, I look back and I'm like, wow. You know, this is something that the old Russell, uh, without Christ, I don't know what I would have done during this situation. But like I said, he's taking care of me financially. He's taking care of me. I just don't, I don't have a worry. I don't have a, I just don't have that fear of, of anything um, as far as what's going on right now. And, and again, I give him all the praise and all the glory for that. So I just want to take those few moments to share that with you. I also want you all to know how much I appreciate you as my church family. Um, Beach Assembly has been with me uh, from the beginning as far as uh, I was in a pretty dark place. And you all have shown me love and, and I feel like I am a part and I know that I'm a part of, of our church body. And I just want you all to know that I love you and I appreciate you. And uh, I just wanted to share that with you. I wanted to give God the glory. I wanted to uh, honor Him by testifying to His many blessings in His favor. I love you guys. God bless you. We'll be together soon. Hello, Hello from, from the, the home, home of Bobby, Bobby and, and Carolyn. Carolyn. We want to wish you all well today. We're settled in fine and, and just really enjoying God's blessings on us. Hello from the Gelman family. We love you guys and feel so blessed by Beach Assembly. It's been awesome to be able to watch online and we can't wait to get back in person. Bye. Bye. Hey everybody, this is the Barber family here. We hope that you guys have been staying safe and healthy and I cannot wait to see you guys at church. Hey, hey Beach Assembly. Assembly! Casey and Josh Torbich here. Oh! Just spilt the beans! <laughs> Casey and Josh... 
Well, I guess we'll go ahead and tell you, we have decided that we were going to get married during a pandemic. So last Wednesday, we did a little private ceremony at Beach Assembly of God. And don't worry, we're still having our big wedding day. But we decided that we were going to go ahead and start trying to move forward with our future with everything that's going on. So congratulations to you, Casey, for being a wife. <laughs> and congratulations to hubby. <laughs> I hope you guys are doing well. We love all of you. We miss you. We wanted to take this opportunity to send this video. Just tell you how much we love our church family. And we can't wait to get back together with you. Hope you guys have a good rest of your quarantine. And we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Oh my goodness, did you guys know that was coming? I know I was so surprised. Uh, big, huge congratulations to Casey and Josh Torbich. We are so glad God brought you together. So glad God brought you to our church family. And we are so proud of the ministry that you all do with uh, Brunswick Christian Recovery Center. Uh, and by the way, thank you, church family, for supporting them as well as Beach Assembly of God uh, financially and with your prayers uh, during this time. And uh, we just keep moving forward with the Lord, right? So now I am excited to announce uh, Pastor Tony Phillips is uh, bringing our message tonight. So let's dive into the Word together. Good evening, Beach Assembly family and friends and guests. It's a delight to be with you this evening. I want to share some words from you, with you from the scriptures that the Lord has really put deep in my heart as we have been going through this time of stillness, this time of evaluation, this time that has been created by the COVID-19 virus. And many of us have just really depended upon God and I'm trusting you and encouraging you to continue to do the same. Even though we may be resuming things, it may never be the normal that we were used to. However, in John chapter 6, verses 5 through 10, I want to share this with you. That Jesus soon saw a huge crowd of people coming to look for him. Turning to Philip, he asked, Where can we buy bread to feed all these people? Jesus was aware of the crowd. He was very much aware of the needs of the crowd. He knew they were hungry. So he addressed Philip. And he was testing Philip. And that's why he said, where can we buy bread to feed all these people? He was testing Philip. But even though he knew that he was testing Philip, the word says, he, and Philip responded like this. He says, even if we worked for months, we wouldn't have had enough money to feed them. Does that sound familiar? In some of the situations that many of us have found ourselves in, have we not being concerned about did we have enough money did we have enough things uh accrued things that were in storage uh, you know the first thing as comical as it was was the rush for toilet paper you know did we have enough toilet paper how basic of need that is but yet that was the great craze when all this first started so here he is asking this question if we work for months we wouldn't have enough money to feed them he was making an observation and a statement based upon his knowledge. But Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up and he said, Well, there's a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. And then he was relating it. But what good is that with this huge crowd? And we may have found ourselves asking this question, Lord, we do not know how long this shutdown will last. We do not know how long we will have to do without this and without that. So, Lord, what are we going to do? We have a situation here. And then I want to bring this statement to you, this thought to you. Be still. Because Jesus' response to both of them was, Tell everyone to sit down. See, I have heard the Lord say to me when all this started, be still. Be still. And so I began to be still and to listen to what the Lord was saying or to see what the Lord was going to do. So he did say, tell everyone to sit down. So they all sat down on the grassy slopes. And the men numbered about 5,000. So here we have a multitude of people. They're hungry. 
Jesus sees the need. He's testing his disciples. They are responding with the knowledge that they knew, the knowledge that they had, not knowing what the Lord's plans were. But they did as was commanded. Now in Matthew 6, verse 31, Jesus makes this statement. So don't worry about these things saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? And what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. Living in the Myrtle Beach area and the restaurants closed down except for takeout and uh, the hotel industry is shut down and no taking the reservations and not allowing people to fulfill the ones that they did have and beaches being closed and all that eating and dining and going to the beach has been very much challenged and a lot of that's been taken away. Uh, so it's a dilemma. Be still. They're not, you know, the discussions of where we're going to eat, what restaurant do, do we want to go to? Well, we haven't been able to ask that question much lately. And uh, so what are we going to do? And then what will we wear? And I was thinking about this, it's sort of comical, you know, the old phrase, shop till you drop. Well, not much of that's been going on lately, has it? And uh, even for the men who like to go to Home Depot and to Lowe's and carouse around and spend hours just looking at some new gadget that they could purchase with all the restrictions and with the limitations there, it's just not nearly as much fun. So a lot of these things have been called into question. But Jesus goes on and says, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Isn't there more to life than just having your physical needs met and your clothing needs met? And he says, look at the birds. Look at the birds. See, now you're having to evaluate. We're having to evaluate by looking at the birds. I have bird feeders in my backyard, and I enjoy seeing the doves come and the blue jays and the cardinals and the various birds, many of that I don't even know their species, but I enjoy watching them come to feed. And the squirrels and the raccoons and even the feral cats show up. But they're take, being taken care of. Uh, the birds, they don't plant, they don't harvest, they don't store food in barns, but the Heavenly Father feeds them. Are we not more valuable? Aren't you far more valuable to Him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? So in this stillness, evaluating life has been something that I personally have been doing and talking with others we sense that they're doing the same thing. Evaluating life. What is the purpose of this coronavirus? I personally believe it's to call us to draw near to God and to remind ourselves and to understand that the blessings of God have been upon our lives through the years and the things that we have achieved, the things that we have been blessed with are God's provision. And we need to Give the glory and the honor back to our Heavenly Father who has so blessed us. Remember these things. In verse 28, he says, And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the field and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. So again, God is able to meet the needs. And remember Solomon in all his glory was not dressed as beautifully as they are. A remembering. Has the Lord not fed us? Has the Lord not clothed us? Has the Lord not met our various every need that we have, as various as they are? Yes, He has. And in verse 30, And if God so wonderfully cared for the wildflowers that are here today and thrown in the fire tomorrow, He will certainly care for you. So we look, we evaluate, and we remember then the question comes, so why do you have so little faith? Now, I'm not accusing everyone of having little faith, but it is a reminder not to fear and not to become anxious about tomorrow. In verse 31, Jesus says, so don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat? What will we drink? What will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. God does know every need. He knows the need that I have today. He knows the need that I will have tomorrow. He knows your needs today. 
He knows your needs tomorrow. And so when the questions come that we face and that we entertain, and the Lord's allowing us to ask these questions, and even the Spirit of God may be asking us these questions, God the Father already knows what He's going to do. He already knows that this was coming. This did not take God by surprise. Nothing takes God by surprise. God is a God of purpose, plan, and objectivity. And everything that comes to us and everything that we experience, every crisis in life that we go through, he has a plan to make it work together for our good because we've been called of God. We've been chosen of God. So what do I do? If you've never done this, this is something I hope that I can encourage you to do. I act. I act upon the word of the Lord. In verse 33, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. Now this is in the New Living Translation and I chose this translation because it deals so appropriately, appropriately, well I can't even say the word, I'm sorry, but uh, appropriately, there I go, (coughs) for what we're facing. But to live righteously. If we've been living for God, if we've been dependent upon God until this coronavirus showed up, then continue to do so. If we've been seeking the kingdom of God, then continue to do so. But if you haven't been seeking the kingdom of God, and if you haven't been living righteously, then have a prayer of recommitment or have a prayer of first-time commitment and surrender everything to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. And then he will give you everything you have need of. Now notice the word is need, not necessarily wants. There's a lot of people who have wants but are not needs. Some people have desires, but desires are not needs. But our Heavenly Father knows what we have need of. And he will supply those needs. Well, what about tomorrow, Pastor Tony? What what happens tomorrow? Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. This is why Jesus said in the model prayer, give us this day our daily bread. We should not be anxious about tomorrow, but rather depend on God for today. And the fact that God sustained us yesterday reminds us and ensures the fact that he will feed us today (coughs) and that tomorrow he will do the same. So as I depended on God yesterday, I'll have depended upon him today. And as I depend upon him today, I will depend upon him tomorrow because he is the God of steadfastness. He changes not. He's the God of my youth. He's the God of my adulthood. He is the God of my future and he changes not. Well, going back to John. So what happened? In John 6 and 11, Jesus took the loaves and gave thanks to God. Take the blessings that you and I have received and give thanks to God for them. Thank God that he provided when we were not even thinking about a day of leanness coming to our lives. But thank God he's made the provision. Thank God for the people who have added things to our life that have sustained us. Those who have dropped off care packages. Those who have, just out of the goodness of their heart, and you have to excuse me, I have a battle with allergies, not COVID-19. And trust me, it's exciting to go to a public place and have a cough and people look at you. But hey, God's my healer and I will struggle through this. So give thanks to God. And after we give thanks to God, and here's what Jesus did. See, they brought to him the five loaves and two fishes. And Jesus took it and he blessed it. He gave thanks to his father, God. And then he blessed it and he gave back to his disciples and he said, here, take this and distribute this. You know what? Everyone ate as much as they wished to eat. And when it was all said and done, they went around and picked up the fragments. And you know the story, there was 12 baskets of fragments. Well, what happened to the fragments? I don't know, maybe the little boy took them home and blessed his his village with it. But what we do know is God took what was provided to him, 
given to him. He gave thanks to it. And Jesus told them to distribute it. And that's what we do. We take the blessings that God has given us. We give thanks for those blessings. And those blessings of yesterday, those blessings of today, will be able to sustain us tomorrow because there's plenty of leftover because he is a God of supply. He continually supplies our need. So, trust God today. Trust God tomorrow. Lean not to your own understanding. Not to your own way of thinking, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. He will sustain us. And when the time comes, ain't no grave going to hold this body down. Because we have received the promise of resurrection life. In a comical way, I was thinking about this today. We've got the best life insurance policy there is. And that is... We have received not the wages of sin because we've repented of our sins, but we have received the gift of God, which is eternal life. We have a great insurance policy. So when we leave this planet, when we leave this world, we're going to be with the Father in the heavenly abode. We have nothing to lose, saints. We have nothing to lose, friends. Trust in God. He is faithful, and he will be faithful till the end. He said he would never leave us nor forsake us. But he would be with us all way, all the way to the end of this age. Will you join me in prayer? Father, I thank you for this opportunity to share with our friends, with our family, Lord, and with our guests. And I ask, Lord, that you would draw them close and help them and I, myself, Lord, to, to be still. But in our stillness to evaluate. And in our evaluation to remember your blessings and then act upon the blessings by giving thanks to you for the blessings and how you have sustained us. And Father, help us to reach out to others and to bless them with the love that you've given us and the encouragement that you've given us that we can be a light unto all men and lead them to the wonderful gospel of Jesus Christ that God, that Jesus came to save us, to redeem us, and to give us peace. And that everything is in His hands. Everything is in con His control. And we will win when it's all said and done. We win because He won at Calvary. In Jesus' name, amen. You were the word at the beginning. One with God.